Beware of celebrity Christian converts. Uh, there's a bunch of these that I'm seeing here recently. Um, Hawk Hogan and his wife and their children, I guess he just got baptized, got saved, quote unquote, and baptized. And uh, yeah, there's been a bunch of other ones. Jim Carrey's kind of on the fence, kind of leaning towards, oh, he's you know saying about my journey towards Christ or something. Which, you know, he has another video of him out there where he painted his interpretation of who Christ is, and it's a mixture of all three races. You know, the Shemitic, Japhetic, Hamitic uh, peoples. I don't know if Jesus is real. I don't know if he lived. I don't know what he means, but the paintings of Jesus are really my desire to convey Christ consciousness. I wanted you to have the feeling when you looked in his eyes that he was accepting of who you are. I wanted him to be able to stare at you and heal you from the painting. You can find every race in the face of Jesus. And I think that's how every race imagines Jesus. They imagine him as their own. Oh, well, that would be the Antichrist when he shows up. But, um, you know, there's these people, they come out. Uh, Undertaker, the other professional wrestler there, and, you know, there's all these different Hollywood movie stars, and they come out, oh, I got saved now, I'm a Christian now. This uh, Shia Labou or Labou, or I don't know how you say the guy's name. Um, I got out of movies before that guy, you know, got out of watching movies, I'll say it that way, um, before he was even in movies. I don't even know who the guy is, but there was a big thing. Oh, he's a Christian now. No, he's a Roman Catholic. Okay. And there's a lot of these guys that are coming out um, and they're Christians now and, and things. And there was a documentary um, called Out of Shadows. And it was about the, the whole mind control thing in Hollywood, the MK Ultra, child molestation and everything else that goes on out there. And at the end, there was a guy from Hollywood and he said, imagine what we could do if we turned Hollywood into a positive thing and made positive movies. And we start bringing out movies celebrating Christianity and things like that. And it's funny because Roman Catholicism has always had their hand, specifically the Jesuit order has always had their hand in Hollywood. And they were the ones that controlled the profanity ratings, you know, or the ratings of the movies based on profanity or violence or, you know, fornication or whatever else. Rated G, PG, PG-13, rated R, whatever. Um, you can look that up. Again, the Roman Catholic Church had their hand in that whole system. But this guy was saying about how that we could create these great films and we could really change the minds of people. Well, see, that's what the whole thing of Hollywood is. It's a mind control operation. Um, again, they have an office of uh, propaganda or something at the Pentagon that they, and I've done videos proving that. I have shown the actual you know, video of the place and everything else. So they have been using Hollywood to uh, make the people, to control people's minds and to make them think this war is good or that type of lifestyle is fine or whatever. They've been doing that. It's an admitted fact. I'm not just conspiratorial for saying that. But now all of a sudden we're seeing more celebrities coming out and saying that they're Christians. There was this whole big thing of... Um, What's his name? The the uh, black rap guy or whatever. Um, he was married to that harlot. I can't think of the guy's name right now. Um, but there was this thing. Uh, he's now calls himself the artist or something. I, I forget what the guy's name is. I don't know names of people like that anymore, thankfully. <laughs> I'm so far away from Hollywood. I don't care about what goes on there. But uh, he came out and oh, he, he got saved. And he was going, he was yoking up to Joel Osteen and everything. And um, and I cannot think of that guy's name. I, well, whatever. Put it in the comments if you know who, who I'm talking about. Um, but he was on the in, Info Wars the one time, and he had this black uh, mask on his face or something. Um, <laughs> but uh, now he calls himself the artist or something. But uh, you know, everybody was all excited about that. Oh, it could be legitimate. He's just all messed up now. So. Um, no, it wasn't legitimate. And at the time I said, no, not legitimate. Um, so, but there's a lot of these that are happening. So how can you tell if a celebrity truly gets saved? That's the purpose of this study. Well, nobody can know for sure. We, we can't really judge that or whatever. Oh, yes, we can because the Bible tells us how we can. And I'm going to show you those scriptures. We are to judge righteous judgment. 
All right, let's go first to James chapter 4 in the New Testament. God doesn't just expect us to be wishy-washy and just kind of vague and ambiguous and we don't really know and we're not really sure. No, God gives us definite standards in the Scriptures. People have to follow the Scriptures. Um, again, if I said to you that uh, uh, Bartholomew um, died on the you know, cross or something for your sins, you'd say, huh, no, his name's Jesus. Jesus died, not Bartholomew. Well, what right do you have to judge me? You know, I, my beliefs are that Bartholomew died. Well, it's the Scriptures. What do the Scriptures say? The Scripture doesn't say Bartholomew. It says Jesus. Well, if we can get that figured out, then there are other Scriptures as well that would say, this is how you tell if somebody's genuinely con converted or not. All right? And you give them time. I realize you know, new Christians will do some stupid things. I, I understand that. I'm old enough to realize that. But if you look and they see that there's no change happening... Well, then I don't think it took. James chapter 4, verses 4 through 10. Let's read that. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So a celebrity is an enemy of God. They're a friend of the world. That's how you become a celebrity. There's no such thing as a celebrity that's hated by the world. All right? Celebrities are the friend of the world. Verse 5, Do ye think that the Scripture saith in vain, The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Okay, so there you have the first step. They're humble now. They're no longer the friend of the world. You get a true celebrity conversion, they're going to be leaving the world, and the world is going to turn against them. And they are going to humble themselves. God resisteth the proud. I don't want anything to do with you if you're going to be this prideful celebrity going around with your cool look and everything else. God's not interested. They have to humble themselves. Verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Oh, you don't understand, brother. There are, there are Hollywood celebrities and they've made pacts with the devil. They've done all kinds of weird blood rituals and things and gotten into Satanism so that they could be obtain fame and whatever. Uh, they can't get out. You don't understand. They're not allowed to get out. They'd be killed. Well, the Bible says right there, resist, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You can resist the devil and the devil will run away. And there have been some celebrities, by the way, that did resist the devil and, they, and the devil fleed from them. And their life, you know, pretty much falls apart after that. And they are not famous anymore. Nobody cares about them and things. And I've known... Uh, a few that contacted this ministry and told me about that, that they were celebrities and then they left and now there's no going back. They don't want to go back either, by the way, too. Verse 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. How do you draw nigh to God? How do you get closer to God? Reading his word. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Did they cleanse their hands? Did they get away from the wickedness and things and say, I, that stuff I used to do is really bad there and whatever. I mean, I've seen these guys and they'll, you know, I, I got saved, I'm a Christian now. And then they'll come out and they'll sing their same old music or they'll, you know, go and they'll hang out with the same circles that they supposedly left. Brian Welch, the uh, corn um, guitarist or whatever the guy is, you know, there's no change. <laughs> Still goes and he tours and he plays with his wicked satanic band. No change. He didn't cleanse his hands or purify his heart. Verse 9, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. That's what you have to do when you look at your past. That's what the Apostle Paul did. He was going out killing Christians. He's afflicted. He's mourning. He's weeping. Oh, I can't believe I did that. And you know what? When you genuinely get saved, you will truly be afflicted and you will mourn and you will weep for the things that you did back when you were lost. When you think back to that, you'll think, oh, I can't believe I did that. You'll always feel that. I mean, you get victory over the sins. You know, it's, it's under the blood. It's been forgiven. It's whatever. But if memories come back, you'll just think to yourself, oh, I was such a fool back then. You don't say, oh, I, I still do that occasionally, and I'm still fine with it, and whatever. Yeah, I still hang out with the same people, and yeah, I still go to the same Hollywood uh, balls and whatever else. 
No, you don't. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. It's going to be what's part of, you know, you think of being humble. What's part of it? Humility. Are you ready to be humiliated as a celebrity? Are you ready to have to go and face the media and say, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought, hath been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Are you some kind of fanatic or something? Well, probably you're going to call me that, but uh, yeah, you know what? This system that I was part of, it was wicked, it was bad. I'm going to tell the truth about what goes on in Hollywood. And I'm not going to worry. I won't fear what man can do unto me. I, my faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're humbling yourself before the Lord. You're going to be humiliated by the media. Your name is just going to be raked through the mud if you truly get saved as, as a celebrity. That's why most don't. Luke chapter 16. They look at that and they say, well, I couldn't go through that. I, that'd be embarrassing. I'd lose money. I remember there was a, a guy the one time that uh, he was in pornographic movies or something and this guy said that he was driving along, um, going home the one day after his work, and, and he said um, he just pulled over and just was weeping, just crying, couldn't even drive. He was crying so bad. And one you know, thing happened and led to another, and he ended up getting saved. And he got saved, and he left the wicked movie industry that he was part of. His wife left him. He lost his house. He lost everything. And... Uh, sitting around in a house church Bible study. <laughs> this former just wicked uh, porn star, and he's just left everything. That's the kind of thing that, that it happens when you are a celebrity and you truly get saved. You'll lose everything. And you know what? It's worth it. You're willing to give it up. You don't want to hold on to things and say, oh, I just can't imagine giving up this, my money and my connections and whatever else. Run away from that stuff. Luke chapter 16 and verse 15 says, And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Do you have anything in you anymore that's highly esteemed among men? Because if you do, it's an abomination in the sight of God. Well, I'm a Christian now, so I'm a celebrity Christian. I can go around to these church buildings and I can, you know, uh, be welcomed and with open arms and people praising me and everything else. Then you're still highly esteemed among men and you're an abomination in the sight of God, according to the scriptures. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Modern professing Christianity is an abomination. People come out and they think that uh, they can be saved and there's no change in their life. They can be saved and there's no condemnation of sin. There's no right and wrong. They make up their own beliefs. It's Gnosticism is all that that is. You imagine that you are saved and you imagine that you are having this relationship with God, which is actually just your mind, and you can... Ignore what the scriptures say and you just kind of make up your own truth. Uh, that's not Bible-believing Christianity. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 8. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. The Apostle Paul, he was on a celebrity in the modern day sense of it, but he was a celebrity in the first century in that um, he was raised at the feet of Gamaliel. He was a very educated man. And um, very well respected, really going places as a young, you know, Pharisee. And uh, he was going to do great things. And then he got saved and it all fell apart. And God got a hold of his life. And now the people that once respected him, now they're hunting him down, wanting to put him to death. And what does he say? Oh, I sure miss that old life. Boy, I sure made a lot more money than I do now. And I had a lot better contacts. And Oh, I'm thinking about going back to it. Maybe I could just be in one more movie or maybe I could just do one more album or whatever. No. What things were gained to me, things from my past, those I counted loss for Christ. 
throw them away, walk away from it. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. That's what you have to look for when you see somebody that says, I'm a celebrity, and I got saved. I'm a Christian now. Okay, what do you think of your past? Oh, I remember this one uh, wrestling match I was in, WrestleMania you know, 16 or something, or WrestleMania 1, and, and it was me and Andre the Giant, and we, we oh man, has, this was a great thing, and all oh, the, the crowd. No, hang your head in shame. Oh, I can't believe I did that. I don't even, you know, I don't even want to talk about that. I remember reading a story about Alvin York. Uh, they made a movie about him, Sergeant York, um, many years ago, World War I hero. And uh, read his biography, and um, the author that went and interviewed him, he said, uh, he said, uh, Alvin, he said, tell me about your past. And Alvin was a very wicked young man before he got saved, and a lot of drinking and, you know, just rough youth and things. And, and um, he said, Alvin, tell me about your past. And Alvin just, he said, Alvin looked at him and just went. Just look down at the ground and just, no. I don't, want to, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to remember what I was back then. I was deceived. I was wicked. I did horrible things. But you see these celebrities? Oh, I'm a Christian now. And uh, I have all the look of the old life still on me. I feel no shame for the tattoos. I feel no shame for the piercings. I feel no shame for the way I dress immodestly and causing lust and things. And whatever, look at my big, huge muscles here. As I wear these muscle shirts and things. And I feel no shame at all for any of that stuff. Hey, I, you know, I did what, what uh, God called me to do. I, was, I you know, lived to my, the best of my abilities and talents, but I had a, a God-shaped hole in my heart. And Jesus filled that God-shaped hole. In I count all things but dung. All that stuff from my past, just a bunch of horrible, disgusting filth. I don't even want to talk about it. Let me tell you about Jesus Christ. Let me show you what the Word of God says. Boy, isn't this amazing? And you know what happens when you genuinely get born again? You're going to be so excited for the truth. Jesus is the truth. He brings truth into your life, and you come to your relatives and you say, you're going to believe what the Lord showed me in His Word. And, and you start showing them from the Scriptures, and you say, isn't that amazing? And they, oh, well, uh, it's cool that you're into this whole religion thing, but man, just back off a little bit. You're getting a little bit too fanatical. A real Christian will say, I'm not fanatical enough. I want to learn more. More about Jesus would I know. Like the old hymn talks about. Um, more of His love to others show. You know, you want more of the scriptures, not less of it. And you'll be ashamed of your past, not proud of your past. So um, watch out for this whole thing. As a Bible-believing Christian, you will be, we'll, we'll be seeing more of these celebrity Christians coming out because all that they're really doing is they're just coming out and becoming, getting the world ready for the Antichrist system. Because the Antichrist system, people are going to say, oh, we're all Christians and look at this great Christian movement we have and everything else. That's a, a really dangerous thing here. So, again, this, um, uh, I still can't think of the guy's name, this, this black rapper guy, Sean Combs or something, was it? Or uh, I don't know. <laughs> but this guy came out and, oh, he's a Christian and I'm, you know, and it looked kind of, you know, maybe it took... But I, people were just, oh, isn't this wonderful, brother? He, he got saved. I, I believe he got saved. Eh, so, you know, let's just give it some time here. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure, the Bible talks about. You have to look and you have to say, okay, um, you're a Christian now. What about that stuff in your past? Well, don't judge me. You know, I, I did some good things there, but, you know, I, uh, <laughs> be very careful. Do not fall for these celebrity conversions. Uh, rarely do they ever work out, just to be quite frank with you. 
I mean, if, if you see some celebrity and their whole life just falls apart and everybody turns out and they hate them and whatever else, uh, then there might be some hope for them. But if you see them and they're still popular and, you know, the whole modern churches, you know, they're using them to go around and they're speaking at churches now and everything. Uh, okay. <laughs> You're dealing with a false convert. All right. So um, be very uh, cautious out there. Because there's a lot of people that are false, they're fake, and um, they will lead you astray. Because they'll start to make you think that you can become worldly and that that's fine with God. And well, so-and-so did it, this celebrity Christian, they're living a worldly life and they're being blessed of God. Maybe God doesn't care about sin anymore. Maybe I can do the same thing. Maybe I can be worldly. No, you can't. The friend of the world is the enemy of God. Whatever is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. We are not called to be celebrities in this world, brethren. Never forget that.